yeah. But today we are looking at the Potato Award. Now I had no idea this was a thing. <laughs> but I'm very pleased about it because potatoes, like Pastor Dan and a few other pastors I've been hearing, I love potatoes like he does. So um, yeah, this is exciting times. <laughs> but before I go into my presentation, because it's not, it doesn't really cover the different what we can do with potatoes. So what is everybody's favorite form of potatoes? Um, you can shout it out or type it in the chat. Anyone? Uh, my favorite uh, uh, form of a potato is a mashed potato. Nevertheless, jack potato goes really high as well. So sometimes they have a fight to see who's going to be on top, but jack potato and mashed potato winning for me. Myrtle saying that she loved mashed potatoes as well. I have to say I've just had a lunch, a beautiful lunch cooked my, by my mother-in-law and we had some lovely roast potatoes there. So, yes. <laughs> oh, Eudora saying sweet potatoes. Yes, my husband loves sweet potatoes. It would be good to hear uh, from, uh, from Bogdan as he is uh, living in Ireland, but also he's Romanian which is like the two most potato countries in the world, I would say. Bogdan, what is your favorite shape of a potato? <laughs> uh, we just love potatoes. It doesn't matter what shape they are in. <laughs> Mashed, boiled, fried, chips, It doesn't anything. matter how long it's a potato, we love it. <laughs> Wonderful. Jenny, what's your favorite, did you say? Um, I like a jacket potato, but I like it in any form. <laughs> So I'm surprised no one said like chips or actually like fried. Okay. Oh, there you go. Jason just said fries. Thank you. Thank you. Because our honour doesn't actually cover that kind of stuff, but it looks basically at a potato. Um, and potatoes are so healthy and we'll find out as we go on how healthy they are. But it's what we do to them that makes them unhealthy. So jacket potatoes are pretty healthy because it's just the potato itself. And then it's what we put on it that adds up the calories and stuff. Um, and as well, cooking your potatoes as fries and stuff. It's the oil that adds to the um, degrading the healthiness of your potato. But say that's not covered in our award, but we'll we'll pop into that now and we'll see what um, we can learn about potatoes. So hopefully you guys have got your your worksheets ready um, and we'll start going through it. So the potato award. <laughs> Uh, this is just a brief outline of what we will be looking at, so you don't need to take much notice of this, but we will find out the best conditions to grow a potato in, so you can try these things at home, um, if you have a pot or your own veg patch, but we will be able to go through that, um, as well as looking at the different kinds of potatoes and their nutritional benefits. So, first of all, we turn to our Bibles. So. Um, the verses that we look at don't specifically say about potatoes, but they are about the land in general. So if you have your Bibles there and we turn to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11 to 12, it says, Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. And then verse 12 says the land produced vegetation plants bearing okay plants bearing seed according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed in according to their kinds and God saw that it was good so my question to you is what did God see was good um, and this is the third day of creation so we're going to answer the questions in our workbook together um, what did God see was good on the third day. Any ideas? Okay. Hansel saying plants. Yep. Uh, Javen saying vegetation. Let's see if we've got anything on Facebook coming up. Um, not just yet. 
No, so we've got plants and vegetation. Plants and vegetation, brilliant. Yeah, that's basically the answers. The land and the vegetation and the plants and of course, um, all of the greenery around us is capable of reproducing itself. So they have seeds and different ways of making more of itself. So our environment is absolutely fantastic. And it tells us right here in Genesis that that was God's intention, that he wanted um, everything to look after itself, that he gave everything a system in which to grow, to produce, to flourish and nourish the environment around us and then become part of a cycle. So our second text is found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 29 to 30 and it says then God said I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that was fruit with seed in it they will be yours for food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. So my question for this one is what did God give us? Um, and in brackets, Adam and his descendants, because we are all children um, from the line of Adam and Eve for the, being the first parents. So what did God give us? All right, so let's see, let's get some typing going on the chat. Uh, you're welcome to chat in either Facebook or on Zoom. Um, and uh, Jenny's question was, what was it that God gave us? Um, nothing through on Facebook yet, okay. Uh, Hansel saying food and Javon saying gave us life. Brilliant answers. I like those answers. I've just put everything, which is, yeah, food and life. Food, of course, sustains our life. And God has provided all these things for us, which is absolutely fantastic. He's thought of our every single need. Okay, thank you for your answers. Um, the third the third verse reads from Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 2. And it says, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. Uh, so as we grow up, we'll find this, this verse expands into so many things, but I've just taken it as um, until Jesus returns and breaks the cycle, we are all part of this cycle of life. Um, Say so whether it's from a little seed growing up into a big tree falling and then being used as firewood, firewood and then re-nourishing the ground with the ash and things like that or we of course grow old and die and then become part of the earth again um, <laughs> but it's all part of the circle of life um, and there's always a time for everything and just because you've and another way of taking it is just because if, if you feel you're not flourishing at the moment in your own place, there will be a time for you to come. So this this text has so many different things, um, and you'll learn more about that as you as you get older. But, um, okay, now, sorry, one of the little more boring points of the thing is what are the nutritional benefits of potatoes? Now, I've already said that they are super healthy for us, um, as long as we don't smother them too much with lovely butter and cheese and beans and all these, well, beans are quite good, but cheese and beans, which I like to add to my jacket potato. But as long, if it's just cooked by itself um, and then eaten, it is fat free um, as well as cholesterol free. That's a big word, but it is on the slide there. It's a good source for fiber. Now fiber is really important because it feeds the friendly gut bacteria and keeps our bodies healthy. Um, it's low in, in sodium, which is found in salt, which of course you probably know that salt's quite bad for you if it's in huge quantities. Um, vitamin C, it's got a lot of, and it help, that helps the immune system. And vitamin B6 improves your mood and helps brain health. Okay, um, it's also got potassium in it, which is good for so many things, including blood pressure um, and water balance and muscles. So of course, you know that we need a good balance of these vitamins and fibers and things to keep ourselves healthy and keep ourselves growing at a good rate. 
um, and potatoes are brilliant for these things. So that is question two. If you wanted to write, um, there's some little arrows coming off your potato there to add some of those points. Um, yeah, so if you want to get the spelling of cholesterol, it's there on the thing and it's C-H-O-L-E-S-T-E-R-O-L. -E -E so it's cholesterol free. Okay. Um, so um, hopefully everybody's downloaded their worksheets, but if they haven't, um, I'm just popping the um, link in the chat um, on Zoom and Facebook. Um, so you can fill in your answers um, as Jenny's going through it all now. Lovely, thank you, Natalie. Okay, so our third question, I looked and I thought this was a bit strange, but then I realized that it's an American honor. Originally, it originally, it originally came from North America. Um, so this question <laughs> we might struggle to um, answer without a little bit of research, but we'll answer it nonetheless. The potato is the official food of or vegetable of which USA state, so United States of America, is broken up to into states, um, and it's already in the picture there. Um, it's Idaho. It's the state food food of Idaho. Now I don't know if you've ever travelled anywhere, and you've seen a huge vegetable or something, and that town is then known for that vegetable or that fruit. Um, so I've travelled in. Australia and there's actually one spot where there's a big banana and they're known for that big banana or there's a big um, welly boot and they call it a gum boot and they're known for that because the amount of rain that they have and things like that so Idaho is especially known for its potatoes and as you can see in the picture they have a potato museum <laughs> so if you're ever in the states have a look at that so this is just a quick look at the states um, the state foods in America. So you might be able to make out that this is um, the United States of America all spread out. So um, in New Hampshire, they actually have a state vegetable, which is the white potato. And we'll learn a bit more about that later. And North Carolina and Louisiana, their state vegetable is sweet potatoes. So you can see that they're really spaced out where the potatoes are. So potatoes are pretty good at um, being grown in many, many places throughout the world. They actually originated in South America, I found out when I was looking, so it's a little interesting. So how do potatoes grow? I wonder if you guys know this. Is it on a tree, on a vine, under the ground, or on a plant? Anyone got any ideas? Oh, that's an easy one. So let's get, come on Facebook uh, viewers, let's see what you can come up with for that. Um, and um, Bogdan said that he would keep an eye on the um, Zoom chat for us. So he'll be um, on Zoom. Know. On Zoom, the answers are from Jason and Hansel and both said uh, underground. Great. Yes, they are found underground, so um, they need digging up at some point, but we'll have a look at the next slide. Like carrots, um, you actually plant the whole potato underground, you put a big mound on top of it so it gets nice and warm, and then the green shoots come up and that's how it continues its growth by taking the warmth and everything from the leaves and down into the soil and into the growing potato beneath. So you won't actually be able to eat the potato that you've used, but it will produce lots of little ones on the roots below. Um, and we'll find out a bit more about that. But uh, can anybody tell me what are the best growing conditions? Now, if you've grown anything or have any plants at home, it's pretty much the same as these. So what does a plant need to grow? Any ideas? Right, I know, I'm sure you've all done this in school um, for your biology lessons or science lessons. So um, yeah, come on, let's get those answers going. I have uh, watering, sunlight, 
Uh, Theodora said water, air, and worm. Jason said soil. Excellent. Uh, was there anything, for Natalie? No, I'm afraid Facebook. Um, come on, guys. <laughs> no coming through. Yeah, I think they are actually quite a way behind us. Okay. Um, so <laughs> there's quite a time lag. All right. Well, thank you for your answers. Oh, so. sorry. Billy, Billy just come through to say sunlight. Oh, and someone, Amusa, has just said lots of space in between each plant. Yeah. And um, Billy's also said sunlight and water. Brilliant. Yeah in with what you've got on screen. Brilliant. Yes. So you guys have all said water. Um, the sunlight is excellent. And so that produces the warmth in the ground. So someone said warmth as well. So that's all tied into the, the sunlight. And you can increase that by having them in a greenhouse and a pot and they'll get a lot warmer. Um, and air, because someone said um, about the spacing. So they do get quite big bushy plants. So you do want them to be able to spread out and if you have them too tight with plants growing closely together then there's no air circulating around them and they actually start dying off so it's really important to keep the air flowing around them so the leaves don't go moldy and um, start deteriorating whilst you've still got your potatoes trying to grow under the ground um, yeah so to find out well later on we'll look at how to grow a potato but they say that the best way to check if it needs a bit more water if it's in a pot in particular is to put your finger in and see if it's still wet two inches down which is five centimeters um, and also they suggest 21 degrees temperature is the best now <laughs> that might be a bit difficult here in the uk Though for some places they've got 17, 18 degrees at the moment, which is great. Absolutely great for our potato growers. Um, it could do a little warmer, but how often do we have 21 degrees? I don't think it's very often. Um, yeah. So what are the different varieties of potatoes and which varieties are available in your area? So this will require a little bit of homework, but to start with, we'll have a look at the different varieties of potatoes. So my first one here is called a russet potato. So there's lots and lots of different kinds of potatoes, um, but they can be generalized into a, um, a few different categories rather than all these different ones. Um, so a ru russet potato, has a thick skin with light and fluffy center. Mm. Now that sounds perfect for a jacket of potato to me. So our little symbols in the bottom there tell us what they are used for as well. So we've got um, baked, pan fried, mashed, or as fries or chips. So that, is, that potato is great for that. Our red potato, has um, a thin skin and stays firm throughout cooking. So again, this is good for a jacket potato. Um, it's good for uh, being steamed in salads, in soups and grilled. So I don't know if you guys have seen all these different ones. They're probably quite good for wedges as well, aren't they? I would have thought so. I would have thought so, definitely. Um, so the skins are, are red, but as you can see, the insides are quite um, fleshy coloured still. So um, we'll see a rather interesting one in a sec. <laughs> so this probably looks very familiar to a lot of us. This is your standard yellow potato and it has a buttery flavour with a creamy texture. Now this is probably your best jacket potato or baked potato, depending on what you want to say. It's also used for mashed. A lot of people said about mashed potatoes being their favourite. Um, it can be in salads, soups and grilled. But I found in my research that a lot of our, we've got a lot of named potatoes. So we've got ones that are kind of called, like there's a Charlotte potato, an Elfie and 
M Morris Piper, okay? And I think a lot of these can be grouped into a yellow potato. And that just depends on where they are grown as to what they're called and who grew that particular variety. Now look at these. They're beautiful. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> and I was trying to think if I had ever tasted a purple potato. Bogdan looks astonished. <laughs> this potato is perfectly healthy. Don't worry, it is edible. I'm, I've never seen one. Where do they grow? Um, I think we can actually get them in the UK, but this um, one is definitely in North America. Um, Oh, somebody must have tasted them because Myrtle's saying they are delicious. They are delicious, really? yeah. It says they have an earthy flavour. Does, does she concur? <laughs> Medium skin with earthy flavour. But interesting enough, they've noted this one as being particularly well microwaved. <laughs> it says you can microwave them, you can um steam them have them as baked potatoes or have them in salads so there are slightly different flavors to these potatoes and they differ slightly on their use um and see how well they do oh so, yeah. background history is uh, myrtle saying she buys them in the caribbean imported from the usa oh right okay so north america is definitely the place to find them then Ooh. I like that. Thank you so much. We'd love to see a photo of some of them prepared. If you yeah. can send that in to pass the day and I'll type in his um, email address. But yeah. we'd love to see a photo of those actually prepared. And what you eat them with as well. Yeah. Do they go with beans like our standard potato? <laughs> I normally eat them with like vegetables, some asparagus and some carrots. Like they taste real good when they are roasted. So they're similar to the, the white potatoes or the yellow potatoes, as we call it, but they are very nice. They're actually very nice. Beautiful. Just a different color. Wow. Well, that would definitely spice up your, your salad if you had them in that. Nice and colorful. Thank you for that. So your white potato um, is a thin skin with a nutty flavor. I don't think I've ever dissected um, all my different potatoes quite so much as this but it stays firm throughout when cooked so it's not it's not great for a jacket potato but it's good for being fried or as fries um, in a soup or salad and being steamed so i think these are more along the lines of our little new potatoes that you can find in the shops these little ones are called fingerling potatoes, possibly because of their, their shape, I would, do believe. Um, they are nutty, nutty and buttery flavoured with a firm texture. Now, although they're small, they're good as jacket potatoes and can be fried, steamed or microwaved. So those are funny little fingerling potatoes. Let's see. Uh, here's our petite potatoes, similar in taste to their larger size cousins with more concentrated flavours. Um, I think these are similar to our new potatoes. Um, mm. And our new potatoes are just potatoes that are um, taken out the ground earlier, so they haven't quite developed as much. Um, but these They're are great. They're coming into season now, aren't they, Jenny? Yes, so they'll be your, your beginning of season. Yeah, because they, they won't need so long in the ground. Um, and because our our climate is a little sporadic in its weather, <laughs> there, is always, <laughs> there is always a risk that um, we might have a wet summer and lose the potato crops. We might have a dry spring like we've been having and then they don't develop as quickly. So. Um, any sort of fruit and vegetable is always um, affected by the climate and environment it's in. So it's always great if you've had if you've had some little ones in the ground and you're able to harvest them earlier, then you're obviously it's a lesser time to lose your crop in. Um, and yeah, if you've got your timings right, you'd be able to harvest your crop throughout 
the spring and summer and into winter depending on where you are um, and have potatoes all kinds of all kinds of times of the year so in our honor it's also listed a sweet potato however these are not actually classed as a potato potato but some people said that it was their their favorite um, but these are not to be mistaken by the yam which is similar to a sweet potato but very different in color and texture but i believe you can mm. cut cook them both the same ways as potatoes as well my mum quite likes sweet potatoes um, she'll pop one in instead of a instead of a regular potato for herself um, yeah so oh i keep springing back forwards your task is to find out which varieties are available in your area now you might want to cheat and just pop online and have a look at your local Tesco, Asda, Sainsbury's or whatever you've got near you. But you could always accompany your mum to the store and see um, what they've got. So I had a quick look um, and I've got some Maris Pipe for potatoes, British red potatoes. See, we've got the red ones, but I don't think we have the purple ones readily available to us, unfortunately. Um, I think I'm going to make it my mission to find someone, grow someone now. <laughs> Please do. That would be absolutely fantastic. And I'll then, send you some if I can find them. Yes. <laughs> we'll see if the foliage looks any different for a purple. Yeah, that's true, actually. You're right. That would be really cool if it had purple tinges on the foliage as mm -hmm. well. But yeah, just note down what you've got. I've got a picture of the loose potatoes because we're trying to uh, move away from plastic as well. So you might want to pick your potatoes as well. But as you can see, most of them look like your standard yellow potato um, grouping. But, oh. <laughs> but I've also found out that say we've got ones like Anya, Apache, Aisha, Cornish Kings, Desiree, um, Jersey Royals, Kestrel apparently is the name of a potato. I was pretty sure it was just a bird. <laughs> um, Osprey again and Rooster. Okay, they, these are bird yeah. names, but apparently these are potatoes. <laughs> um, Purple Majesty is apparently available in the UK. So perhaps we do have a purple one. Mm. Um, and Vivaldi. That sounds oh, quite yeah. I think I might have had those actually. <laughs> yeah, I think we we quite often had the um Alfie for jacket potatoes. Um but yeah, I didn't quite realise how many varieties we had, but they they can be loosely grouped into the yellow and the white and the purple and things. So those are the things we need to and I found this chart. Apor apologies to Ireland that you're not on there. <laughs> But it just shows loosely where um, our key growing spots are for potatoes in Scotland, Wales and England. Um, so you can see there is a spot down down my way. I'm down at number 10 nearly uh, for Cornwall. Um, and you can see it's grown in all different sorts um, of environments. So we can quite often have very different weather to Scotland, but they've still got um, potatoes growing there in Persia. So that's just a few um, facts that you can look back at if you get the chance. So our last question, uh, second to last question, is when are potatoes harvested? So it usually takes around 18 to 20 weeks. So it's about five months for a potato to get to full size. So obviously we said about new potatoes that are taken out earlier um, to, for their small sizes. Keep them small and keep have them in a salad or something. Or we used to keep them, take them camping and boil them up and fry them. But to get your standard big size potato, um, it takes about 18 to 20 weeks. And it's when their leaves start to turn yellow. They have to be careful. This isn't, this isn't due to them getting too dry or anything. So if, it, if they start going yellow at, at week 10, week 12, then unfortunately it's because they're too dry and, and the plant isn't doing very well. But they should naturally turn a bit brownie um, at, at a week 18 to 20. 
and that's when you need to harvest them. So they are harvested either with a tractor, if we're talking a big in big site, because imagine picking all of those by hand. So it, it's done its thing, it's dug them all up and it's also picking them up. There are so many different kinds of machines that farmers use to do their harvesting. Um, and it's quite a labor intensive job still nonetheless with tractors. But if you're at home, you can see, you can just dig it up with a fork. And the reason I say fork rather than a spade, because a spade would chop your potato in half if you happen to get it. Whereas a fork would just bear it possibly, but then you've only knocked and damaged the one in a small spot. So make sure you, you're using a fork rather than um, a spade if you are doing it at home. Jenny, I've got one of those bags, one of those potato bags that's got the little flap. So we've oh, yeah. those for this year. So you're supposed to lift down the little flap and you should be able to sort of just get in and take out the potatoes from the side. I've no idea if it's going to work, but you know, <laughs> it will save the need to spear any potatoes with a fork. Yeah, I've also seen um, people have used like two pots. They've, they've cut the sides out of one pot, so it's still yeah. get out, and then the outer one is a complete one. So you can pull oh, that out right. and then knock them out. Um, we've actually used the bags before, but they didn't have a flap, so we still had to upturn them and knock okay. them out. <laughs> <laughs> but they did have a good crop with them. Um, I fancy trying the pot method at some point though. Yeah, very good. Can I just ask one more thing because I'm still growing potatoes this year. <laughs> it said to start off with a layer of soil and then after the plants have grown a bit to chuck some more soil in over the top. But why do they, why do we do that? Um, it's basically to help with the warmth issue. So you even cover, as soon as there's like two inches of growth or so, you cover up that greenery and properly mound it up to keep the warmth in there. Because potatoes do like really warm soil, um, which means like they are affected greatly by the weather and we could have bad crops if the weather turns and things like that. So um, just mounding them up um, helps them to keep that, that warmth in there. Oh brilliant, I don't see why we did it. So <laughs> thanks very much <laughs> that's all right so um the last question is um is a task and we have to either plant a potato and watch it grow um which natalie is well and in doing um or help someone ha harvest potatoes so you might be lucky enough to live near a farm or have um, a relative or maybe you've got your mum or dad has started getting um the potatoes growing already but you can actually go and help harvest them um, and say if you're lucky enough to live near a field you might see the tractor doing it which is really awesome um, but if you want to do it yourself say so you can either pop to your local garden center and specifically buy a, a few potatoes that have already got those little eyes growing so sometimes if you've had a potato at home especially in a warm spot um, the little eyes they're called the little tufts of it will start growing so in this picture in this bag they've got little bits coming off it so it doesn't mean that <laughs> your potato is mutating into anything it's just trying to trying to grow <laughs> yeah so you can either use one that's um that you've had a while from the supermarket that's all we've ever done we've um ones that we've kept a while ago oh, these have gone a bit too far to use we'll, we'll pop them in the ground <laughs> but that is not too often in my house because we do like potatoes so you can purchase them from garden centers so you want to let it grow and it says about half an inch so that's only 1.3 centimeters so it's, it's only about this much um but let those, let those eyes grow a little bit. Um, so that's actually your roots and shoots forming on your potato. So pop them in a warm spot before you put them in the ground so they can get started. So they like their space. Someone said, quite rightly said that they like their space. So you need a big pot. If you haven't got open ground um, or a veg plot, um, you need a big pot. So I would say, um, 
definitely no smaller than your school ruler than your 30 centimeter ruler mine's been through the walls a little bit it's lasted well but definitely no smaller so you'd have your pot like that um but minimum of that one for your potatoes um, and start filling it up with your compost and keeping them six inches apart now that's half of your school ruler that's one of your short school rulers it's 15 centimeters um i would say that is definitely the absolute minimum to have them apart and say and you want to allow them space underneath to grow so yeah if you've got this smaller pot you only want the one potato in it in the middle um say they they like it to be warm so put your pot in a nice sunny position and this is what natalie was saying about once they have their little bits of growth about two inches of growth then put some more soil in there cover it up it doesn't matter if you can only see the very tops of your growth but they like to be warm so they can develop there we see and say after after 18 to 20 weeks then you can dig them up um or tip them out depending on your pot or open the flap <laughs> or yeah depending on what you've got and then you should have a nice crop of potatoes so there we go so or you can help someone harvest them so then you just put the green onto the green vegetation onto the compost heap and then the cycle billing begins again so Jenny sorry we've got a question come through on Facebook Billy's just saying how deep should the pot and the soil be so your potato needs to be how much is this probably about three inches below the surface um so yeah you need your pot at least to be your ruler again to allow all the potatoes to grow um below and then your potato will sit about there in your pot yeah it needs to be a deep pot as well so preferably you'd want to use um open ground but i think natalie is your is your bag about this big yeah it's about that big yep. yeah and um I don't know about 18 inches tall maybe so it's so a bit one and a half rulers one and a half rulers that sounds that sounds good um definitely and say just a little way below the surface pop your potato say it will start growing out um the difficult thing to know is which way up to put it but it should be able to find its way um, quite nicely you might see that one's distinctively a nice shoot and you want to put that near the top um, but it will sort itself out like any plant even if you plant um, a flower bulb upside down it will work its way out and <laughs> although it's upside down the shoot will find its way up so no matter which way you put a potato it should figure itself out excellent He's saying, did you put stones in the bottom of the pot to give it drainage? Um, I've never done this. Um, say so they they don't mind a bit of wet. They don't they don't like being soaked. Obviously, you should always have a um a hole in the bottom of your pots. Um, I think even the plastic bags that we once bought had a little hole riveted in the bottom as well. So as long as there's um, at least one or two holes in the bottom, um, there shouldn't really be a need for stones at the bottom. And that'd be heavy if you're wanting to upturn it as well. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you for that. Um, I think that's Billy's questions answered there. Great, um, we've just got like two minutes left. If you guys sure. ever um, have jacket potatoes left over, we like to do twice baked jacket potatoes so i don't know if you guys know about that so that's all our questions done but if you ever want to do twice baked jacket potatoes you take your jacket potatoes um 
either when they've come out so you've finished your food and they're still a bit warm you can cut them in half and scoop out the middle so i'm just quickly microwaving my old jacket potatoes from the day before um, to scoop them out um, and then I add some cheese, some mixed herbs, some butter. See, this is what makes our jacket, our potatoes not so healthy, but they're so, so yummy. Um, and you can mix any little bits of like corn or anything you like in there. Um, so you scoop them out, mix them all together, add your cheese, pop them all back into the skins and put them into the oven for 20 minutes and then you can enjoy your jacket potato again <laughs> or the leftover jacket potatoes so quite often we'll put in a few extra ones just in case someone pops around or <laughs> to, to save for later but yeah that's just a quick um tip on what you can do with any leftover jacket potatoes but um i'll stop sharing and there we go <laughs>